Hello and welcome back to our little interview uh, corner here. Yeah? Hope you've been enjoying all the incredible keynotes uh, so far. So we've got a very special guest. But before uh, we talk to the incredible Tove, I have a few notes I want to share. So some of the speakers have been talking about empathy, right? I think it was Anna that said empathy is the highest form of intelligence. Now we know NASA has a long history of sending letters and messages to outer space. In essence, wrapping up our humanity in the casing of technology to the unknown. This October, NASA is going to be launching its Europa Clipper spacecraft, and it will include a poem, an engraved poem, by the US laureate Ada Limon. And Ada says about poems, a poem is complete when the receiver internalizes it, receives it, when it creates that connection, right? And in that spirit of connection, we welcome Tove Orgren to our sofa. Thank you very and much. so who is Tove? I have to tell you who this incredible woman is. Tove is an aerospace engineer at NASA. NASA Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley, California. Before joining NASA, Tove has completed internships at the European Space Agency, the Swedish Space Corporation, and OHB Sweden. Tove joined NASA shortly after graduating with an MSc in Applied and Computational Mathematics from KTH Institute. So welcome, Tove. Thank you so much. Oh my Lola. God. It's, it's so nice to be here. It's such an honor. Goodness, we've got an incredible engineer on our sofa. <laughs> so you're going to be giving a keynote later. I will. And we're going to try not to spoil Tove's keynotes with spoilers, but you know the question everybody <laughs> is asking. Everybody wants to know, how do you get from Sweden to NASA? You know what? It's funny how I get that question quite a bit, <laughs> and I'm still kind of struggling to understand how. I think the common theme or the common denominator is that I was just I just got over my fear of applying, mm. um, and I sort of shut out the voice of my imposter syndrome, and then I tried to follow my dream. Right? I I want to say that I had this um, huge dream of working at NASA, yes. and and to some extent I did. Mm. But it was very incrementally that I started to sort of actually believe that it was possible, right? Mm -hmm. That it was possible to realize. Mm -hmm. um, ah. But I set out my goal and yes. then I, I kept applying. Mm -hmm. And um, you I know. know what's incredible because you mentioned imposter syndrome. And I yeah. you are an incredible aerospace engineer for NASA. Yeah. And you still sometimes struggle with this, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's important for viewers to know that, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable, right. you know, it's one step at a time, kind of like the last panel discussed, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, what drives you, Tove? Like, what drives Tove? If we say, what gets your blood going? I'm very much driven by curiosity, mm. or I've been always very, I'm, I'm super excited by this notion of, no, that's not possible. Mm. But what if we try? What if we? Yeah, right. And that's sort of, I mean, that's sort of the core of space exploration, right? Because we're in inevitably doing what has never been done before. Mm -hmm. And that excites me in itself. Yeah. Um, but it also, tr like, transfers to almost anything, right? Yes. All of these difficult challenges we're facing in different fields and in different parts of society, right? If we just come with that, you know, yeah. that that sort of entry point of, like, what if we try? What if we try? And, and then you put together the best team. And, you know, I understand the world and I, I, I'm very passionate about mathematics and physics. So that's sort of how I see that I can contribute. Yes. Um, and also getting, you know, that perfect marriage of doing what excites me and doing it in, in a way that I find meaningful. Mm. Um, well, that's beautiful. That's really profound. What if we try? What if we try? Now, I've always wondered about work-life balance at NASA. Yeah. Because it always feels like, I mean, NASA runs 24-7, sure. pretty much, right? And then moving from Sweden, you know, with kind of work-life balance. Right. How, did you experience any kind of work culture shock, kind of moving from a different work environment into, into that? No, it's such a great question. And I, you know, I was very curious about it myself before moving. Um, 
you know, I came straight out of school, so I think my perspective was also a little bit shifted. Like, I had never had a normal job, so I didn't really know what to expect. But the thing is with, with NASA in, in general, like, I work in Silicon Valley, so this very technical hub of, of a lot of um, prestigious and a lot of merit and credit. Um, but I work for, the, uh, you know, a, the government, like a federal institute, and it's actually pretty relaxed. <laughs> and, and I think people are so much also driven by, by passion and... Um, they're there because they want to be there. Um, so there's never really, like, we have a 9-to-5 schedule. Yeah. Um, I work more sometimes when I want to. Yeah. Um, people work less. Um, but it's never, I don't feel pressured to. That's, yeah. um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it, it's actually, it, it was, that was actually, like, a, a positive surprise. Because yes. I was kind of like, like, Mom, I don't know when I'm going to call you next. Because Correct. I'm going to, you know, go into work mode. Um, it was more relaxed. But it's actually more relaxed. I think maybe Cali the Californian sort of, the you know, the vibe, vibe is sort of exaggerating that maybe. But it's actually one of the things that I appreciate the most. You know, there, there is a joke in the U.S. where we always say, um, you know, if you want a relaxed job, go work for the government. Oh, because absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Also, so that it's, it's quite relaxed as well. But... Um, there are obviously many girls kind of looking at you, saying Tove, coming from Sweden, having this incredible career, right out of college at NASA. What would you tell them in terms of kind of going for their dreams, going for, for yeah. their aspirations, you know, about the impossible? Um, no, and it, it, it's, it is it's a very good question. And um, I think I'll try not to be too cliche, mm -hmm. um, but obviously, it's okay. just be real, <laughs> relax. Um, yeah. I, get, I mean, first of all, like yes, set out a goal mm -hmm. and and try to at least make you know do one thing that sort of aligns or gets you closer to that goal. Um, I think for me, so even even after I completed internship with NASA, um, I was still like, no, I, I, I'm not eligible to apply for this position. People are asking, are you going back to NASA? And I was like, no, that's not really possible. Um, but my supervisor at the time, she was like stop just apply yeah um and i think that sort of it opened my eyes it's like wait maybe i don't always have to believe in myself but if i can just trust the people that do um i think that was sort of and 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 i i look back and that has sort of happened a lot of times where yes. i can just leverage other people and other people's beliefs because mm -hmm. you're doing a good job like yeah. if you're if you're dreaming about something you're passionate something about you're doing a good job like yes. you're, you're doing enough and people see it and people will yeah. see it and trust them um yeah. that you are enough and then you know swallow your pride always apply yes um even if it's there no if there is no position just Give them, give them, shoot them a call or email. Absolutely. Or I think one of the things I'm hearing is about being audacious, right? As yeah. well with your goals, because what's the worst that could happen? Exactly. Like you say no. You get a no. Yeah. Right. But what's the best that could happen? You know, you yes. work in NASA. Like yeah, you, you yeah. get to do your dream. Exactly. So. Exactly. And I think that's um, one message. You know, I mean, you're just an incredible, just innovative person, but also sharing that vulnerability and, and showing that. There sometimes you've been scared or you thought maybe it wasn't possible for you. But here you are. Here you are. So that is uh, just incredible advice. So what can you tease give us, you know, from your keynote that we can mm. look forward to this afternoon without spoiling anything? Well, yeah. Um, so I work with exploring space, right? And, and in particular, I'm very interested in Mars. And I might tell you a little bit about how it is like flying a helicopter on Mars. Okay, so keep it right there. <laughs> thank you so much, Tove. No, thank you so much, Lola. Lovely chatting with you, and I'm um, looking forward to your keynote. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.